Yeah. yeah. It's late fall in the Rocky Mountains, a time of change, beauty, and a bit of dread for me. The aspen trees have long lost their golden leaves, the elk are performing their last bugles, and soon this place will be locked up in the grips of winter. But on this chilly, foggy November morning, the water is still flowing and the fish are still biting. And just yesterday, I received a new rod in the mail, the Dragon Tail Foxfire ZX280. These are my first impressions of this awesome little tiny stream rod. This is a triple zoom rod measuring 9.3 feet in its longest length, 8 feet in its middle length, and 6.6 .6 feet in its shortest length. It comes in either green, shown here, or blue. It weighs 2.8 ounces. And most importantly, it uses fiberglass in its construction. Please stick around for my final first impressions at the end of this video. But for now, I'm excited to actually get this rod on the water. So let's go check it out. If you like my videos, please consider just pressing that like button. It helps me out way more than you could realize and uh, I would love for more people to see my videos. Uh, so with that said, I appreciate all you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let's go catch some fish. All right, off we go. Nice looking little pool here. I'm just gonna pop a streamer through. <laughs> first cast <laughs> wow this rod feels crazy very 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 supple like I'm absolutely surprised I think it could subdue a pretty large fish um, but wow that uh it's just very mid flex um, unlike most of my rods Ugh. Ugly landing there, but there we go. We got him. Let's get him back in the water. Well, there we go. First fish, first pool, <laughs> first cast. Rod fell absolutely wild. Very mid flex, very soft, not a ton of backbone, although I think you could subdue larger fish than you'd expect. Beautiful fish. Get him back in. There you go, dude. This, this rod is very unique. Um, it's actually a fiberglass Tenkara rod. Uh, there's been some other companies that have done fiberglass rods in more traditional lengths, like uh, 12 feet or so, but it's just a fiberglass blend on those. So a mix of graphite, you know, carbon fiber, and uh, then some percentage of fiberglass mixed in. This one, actually has fiberglass on the lower sections and then the top three sections are carbon fiber. So you have a pretty light tip um, which helps a lot with the casting recovery and in the in the lower sections you've got that nice fiberglass um, so the rod is extremely supple which <laughs> is exactly what I felt with that fish. Honestly I was completely shocked <laughs> I didn't expect the uh, to fight the fight to feel quite like that I hooked that brown set the hook and um, it, it's just fun I think I think that's my initial quick impression is that this rod is going to be a ton of fun I'm fishing a streamer right now with a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead so actually a relatively heavy fly which I think kind of goes against the design of this rod just a little bit. It has such a nice mid-flex smooth casting stroke that I think it's going to excel at casting dry flies, unweighted flies. But I'm a sucker for the streamer. 
and uh, it's handling the weight of this particular fly just fine. So looking to be a pretty versatile rod so far as well. It's supposed to snow later today. You can definitely feel it too. It is chilly this morning, especially with the uh, no nice Colorado sun beating down on me. Just a humid, foggy morning. I feel like I'm back east or something. Not used to the humidity. I like this spot right here. Very slack. Plenty of play. Oh, here he comes. There we go. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's the one thing I think that I'm taking away from this rod right away is the fish feel just absolutely pinned. Like, as long as I even do a remotely good job keeping tension on this fish, he's on there. Like, I'm not going to lose him. There we go. There we have it. Another beautiful little Rocky Mountain National Park brown. Thanks, buddy. Come here, brownies. I know you're in there. There he is. Sick. It's turning to be a good day of fishing, actually. The fish are hungry before winter sets in. This place is going to be a frozen over winter wasteland before long here. Yeah, look at this. Man, I, I'm really liking this rod. Really liking this rod. He feels so pinned. It's so in control yet so flexy <laughs> but just such a nice soft rod i think you could hook i think you could probably catch quite a large fish with this thing like whatever the biggest fish is in a tiny creek you could catch it i really i really do believe that there we go nicest fish yet Ooh, i'm loving that blue iridescence gorgeous yeah, wow. Super iridescent. What a pretty fish. Thank you. Alright, nice series of uh, deep pools up against these banks here. I've caught fish in this section before plenty of times. So hopefully we can repeat that. Fishing a meadow stream like this Half the battle is really stealth. And uh, fishing the side closest to me and kind of not really trying to peer over the edge too much really helps. Um, these fish are looking out from their hiding spots or looking upstream and uh, they just can't quite see me up here. That's the idea anyways. I think one niche this rod is going to fill really well is catching the surprisingly large fish that can be found in the smallest of streams. It has such a mid-flex soft profile, not to mention fiberglass is more durable than carbon fiber. Um, I think if I hooked into a pretty big fish, say, you know, 16, 17, maybe on up, um, the rod is just going to give and it might take me a little bit longer to land the fish but that soft action is 100% going to tire that fish out. I think that's where this rod is really going to shine. And now I say that but 
man, these, these smaller fish have been just incredibly enjoyable with that same soft action. The fiberglass, uh, <laughs> especially in this short format so that it's not wicked heavy. You know, if you made like a normal 10 car rod length, 12 foot or so, um, it really starts to get tip heavy, I would imagine. And the rod itself would feel quite heavy. This rod is relatively heavy for a nine foot rod. Um, it's around uh, two and a half ounces or so. I've got another nine foot rod, the uh, Suntech um, Traveler 27, which is technically a Kiru rod. It's quite a bit stiffer. Very, very, very thin handle though. A lot of fun. You can just grip it with your fingertips. It's got a decent backbone. Um, but that thing only weighs 0.9 ounces. So 0.9 versus 2.5, you know, quite a difference there. And you feel it, that other rod is a lot of fun to fish. Um, but uh, I think this one could probably handle some bigger fish a little bit better. Ooh, just missed that one. Ooh, maybe coming back, maybe coming back. He's right near my fly. Come on, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, bite it. <laughs> uh, that's the, the joy and the frustration of streamers sometimes. You can move, move plenty of fish. You can see the strike, you can feel it. But half the time they miss. <laughs> There we go. And once again, I'm gonna say it because I think it's my major takeaway. Every fish feels absolutely pinned. And I say that, but as I see, see, okay, that proves it. I took the, the uh, line into my hand, so there was no back and forth give. He was flopping around on the surface and uh, immediately unhooked himself. <laughs> so <laughs> that goes to show. With the rod flexing, he stays on. With my hands rigid, he gets off. <laughs> we'll count it though. There we go. Yes. Came right out of the deep, completely slack water. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, he's tangled up in some roots here. See, now I do think this is probably the weakness of this rod. Um, yep. Oh, dang, he's gone. <sighs> Maybe I just need to learn how to lean into it a bit more kind of get used to fiberglass and putting a completely full strong bend in it but uh he went back to his home under the bank and uh put some slack in my line and managed to get off so could be a could be a slight downside to this rod and again it could be could be user error as well um definitely still learning i i, I definitely should have been a bit more proactive move with my feet Put a deeper bend in you know i might have been able to keep him out of there but hey we're learning as we go nice hole here i feel really good about this one we're gonna stay way back i'd rather have a bit more stealth we might uh we might not have as good of strike detection because i can't really see what the heck's going on but uh if we spook a fish we're definitely not hooking it so i think it's worth it There we go. Oh yeah. All right, we're gonna play around putting a deep bend in the rod. Yeah, it does have a lot of reserve backbone. You know, I think I'm just being a little timid perhaps. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, like I can, I mean, he's in the current and I can, I can pretty much steer him up here. Um, so yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go down here and land this guy since I can't reach over the edge. <laughs> oh no, don't go into there. <laughs> All right, there we go. And there we have it. Another absolutely beautiful fish. Look at that tail. Woo! Gorgeous. Thanks for playing, buddy. They're liking that jig streamer today. With the snow moving in and other non-fishing obligations looming, I desperately tried to catch a fish or two more, but time was running out and I needed to wrap things up. If this is my last taste of the mountains before next year, I'll gladly take it because what a sweet taste it was. First and foremost, using this rod was so fun. It has such a unique feel, being quite slow and very mid-flex in its profile. When a fish is on the end of the line, the whole rod just bends right down to the handle. And if I have one takeaway from this first morning with this rod, it's this. That mid-flex profile keeps fish pinned. The rod takes up and gives out slack so readily, combating the fish's every movement. It inspires a ton of confidence. And while I didn't have the opportunity to test the rod on any big fish, I'd be willing to bet that you could successfully tire any fish you'd find in a small stream. In addition to the capabilities of this rod, it just felt great to use. It doesn't feel heavy, even in its longest lengths. And sure, it's got some heft for such a short rod, but it's balanced really well. Everything I experienced with this rod this morning really gave it that it factor. I even found myself thinking about the feel of fighting a fish on this rod long after I got home. It's beautiful, it's effective, and it's unique. And I can't wait to explore all my favorite tiny backcountry streams next year with this rod in my hand. Thanks so much for watching guys. Really appreciate you. Uh, if you liked the video, please go ahead and press that like button. Helps me out a ton. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, with that said, incredible day out here. Felt good to get back up into the mountains as autumn is transitioning into winter. Absolutely loved my new rod. Um, the Foxfire was uh, just a joy to use. Can't wait to use it more in some tighter spots and uh, get acquainted with it even more in the future. Um, but I think we've got a, a long relationship ahead of us. So thanks for watching guys. Um, really appreciate you guys again and uh, I'll catch you next time.